Giving honor to God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Provider. We love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And we love our neighbors as ourselves as we give honor to our spiritual guides, to our illuminated Supreme Mother, Mildred Davis Miller, to His Holiness of Blessed Memory, Master Malvin Davis, to Jesus the Christ, to all the saints of heaven and earth, to our Supreme Father, Marshall Davis, to our Supreme Mother, Aletha Ravina Davis Drake, to all the officers, saints, donors, and supporters, volunteers of the Spiritual Guidance Temple of Truth, to the people of all nations, to all living creatures, to all material manifestations, I greet you with Hotep. Shalom. Peace. Abide. And now we'll have our scripture. And as I said, our scripture is from the 33rd Psalm. So here it beginneth. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him with the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the seas, I'm sorry, he gathered the waters of the sea into jars. He put the depth into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the people of the word revere him. For he spoke and it came to be, he commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations he thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. For heaven, from heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who formed the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all the great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him and those who hope in his unfailing love. To deliver them from death and keep them alive in fam famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in thee. I have read the 33rd Psalm in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Blessed Mother. Amen. 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 And now, uh, you please put your likes muted. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer in unison. Repeat it with me, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And our song today is going to be, I'm Pressing on the Upward Way. And that is the first line of the song. I'm pressing on that upward way. Here we go. I'm getting it. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I own the bond. Lord, plant my feet to a higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith, a plan is to take away a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet to a higher ground. Okay, and now. We'll have our meditation. 
and I call this meditation, Open My Heart and Mind to You. Again, with your mics muted, uh, please repeat after me. O oh Lord, direct my thoughts to you as straight as an arrow from a skilled archer's bow. Open my heart and mind that I may know the goodness of your mercy, the strength of your commandments, and the joys of your everlasting love. Amen, amen, amen. And now again, with your mouse, mics muted, we're going to repeat our prayer for this year that we started in Yom Kippur of last year. And this was uh, created by uh, Father Rodney Williams based on a assignment that was given to us by our Supreme Father Marshall Davis. So please repeat after me. This day, I make the decision to improve my health. This day, I make the decision to improve my material circumstances. This day, I resolve all emotional issues in a manner that will bring balance and improvement to my life. This day, I elevate and enlighten my mind in ways to advance my understanding by meditating and reading good material that will tell me of my divine nature. I thank God that this is so. Amen, amen, amen. So that ends the devotional part of our service. And we'll go into our lesson. Just before we go into our lesson, I'm, I wanted to talk about, we're going to be talking about an arrow. I call this lesson the arrow of aspiration. In fact, our Supreme Father Marshall calls this uh, arrow of aspiration. This is coming from his book, Spiritual, um, Spiritual Astrology. And he talks about each sign of the zodiac and tells us uh, spiritual lessons uh, that we can learn from them from each sign. And from the sign that we know uh, commonly called Sagittarius, uh, he talks about the arrow. In fact, the Sagittarius the, t the, the term Sagittarius actually means uh, an archer or an arrow. So I wanted to first look at the, even the Hebrew word that stands for arrow so we can get a better understanding of what we're trying to learn spiritually from this, um, this symbol. And in Hebrew, the, and from the Strong's book, this is word number 2671. It is called uh, Hetz. Hetz is an arrow, and it can mean an archer, an arrow, uh, a dart, uh, a shaft, a staff, and a wound. And it comes from the word uh, hesha, and that it means something that's a piercer, something that pierces or cuts into. So an arrow by implication could be a wound because you've been cut into. Uh, and figuratively, of uh, when you're thinking of God, it can actually talk about a thunderbolt. And that's very important that, that the, when it, the word arrow can mean thunderbolt, uh, can be interchanged with the, the word uh, shet sometimes mean that. So it can be a, a shaft of a spear, an archer, an arrow, dart, shaft, staff, or wound. All those things are in, in that Hebrew word that stands for an arrow. And I'd like to point out that even when you're talking about thunderbolts, because we're talking, you know, sometimes some ancient wisdoms are kind of like mixed up in, in, in uh, mythology things, because we know with Sagittarius, we usually say that uh, uh, there are a lot of stories about this um, um, uh, being that they call Jupiter, and he was in charge of thunderbolts. So it was, but a, there's a spiritual lesson that we can get from that, that we can make our prayers like arrows. We can make our prayers uh, like a thunderbolt because sometimes we need that thunderbolt type of arrow. Now, as I said, this lesson is coming from uh, a book called Sacred Astrology. And I think I said Spiritual Astrology, but it's actually called Sacred Astrology that is by our Supreme Father Marshall Davis. 
Um, I'm not sure. I think they're trying to reprint some more of these books. They are a hardback book, beautiful book. Uh, and it has the Zodiac based, it talks about the Zodiac based on spiritual principles. What spiritual principles can you can learn from these stories? Because many of the ancient stories were there to teach us about our character, how to improve our character, what things we should be looking out for. And from our teachings, we say that all of these lessons are good for all of us, not just, uh, we don't just look at what is called natal astrology. Natal astrology is meaning that you look at astrology, you just look at it from when you were born and what uh, uh, signs you were born under, and then you just apply that small set of the zodiac, because zodiac means the circle of animals, and you just apply the lessons or the um, some of the principles from that one aspect to your life. Well, we, not that we don't use that, but we believe that in a deeper sense, astrology is a circle of life that we all must learn. Uh, some of the lessons that are uh, been kind of coded into these starry uh, luminary bodies that are uh, around us. Uh, what lessons can we learn to get us closer to God? So with sacred astrology, uh, we're trying to show you how to use uh, these times and these principles to be a part of your life. And I think from this lesson, when you start thinking about the, as we start talking about this uh, arrow of aspiration, we will see that everybody needs to understand and know this arrow of aspiration. It's not just for people that we would say would be born under that time that we attribute the sun to uh, Sagittarius, but it's a lesson that we all can learn about that arrow. How can we make our spiritual life, our spiritual development more uh, active by being the using that type of concept? And just talk a little bit more about uh, this is doesn't go into the lesson. I mean, this isn't in the written part because I have, but because remember, I'm taking like one small section out of. Uh, I can forget, I think it's at least about 20 pages devoted to each sign um, with an explanation of the various aspects of that sign and then following it up with some great prayers and meditations on each one of the signs. In fact, uh, some of the prayers and meditations in that book are uh, some excellent prayers that you can do, use during a time where you think that you're under uh, that particular influence. So. Since we're now in that time that is attributed to Sagittarius, we're looking at just one of the points on how he explains the what we call the glyph, which is just a little a graphic symbol uh, that represents the name of the sign. And that graphic symbol happens to be look like an arrow uh, being shot up into uh, the skies, got shot up into the uh, to the heavens. And when you uh, and before we go into it, since we're talking about Sagittarius, you know, there are other points that we talk about Sagittarius. We say that Sagittarius it represents a fire sign, and we say that it is a cardinal sign. Uh, when you think of cardinal um, signs, you think of signs that are um, sort of like they begin things, they start, it's, it's like a startup or uh, when you think about something that's cardinal, it's coming at the beginning. You know, uh, when we talk about them, a sign can either be cardinal, fixed, or flex. And the cardinal signs are always like uh, the beginning, uh, of, of, uh, represents the beginning, something that's starting up. So when I look at, I think about Sagittarius, I always think of it's like a, a starting a fire. How do you start a fire? How do you get a start fire? going uh, as part as being that cardinal fire and how to use that principle of that cardinal fire in your own spiritual development to know what sometimes that you need that spark you know it's like a uh, sometimes I even think of it as like a flintstone you can, uh, which is a stone you can get and you strike it against uh, something and it causes that spark or you got it when you have a match you have that little sandpaper type thing and you uh, rub against it and that match flares up uh, a lot of times when I think of that cardinal or starting fire, I like to think on those images of it. But as we were talking about the word, the Hebrew word for uh, arrow, 
it can also be looking like it's like a lightning strike where you have that power of striking up and we're going to talk about how you can use that in your uh, spiritual pursuit of things. Any questions so far or comments? So what we're going to do, as I said, this lesson is called The Arrow of Aspiration and it's from a book by our Supreme Father Marshall Davis. I have it, I think I have it broken down into three pages. This last one is very short. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first screen. I usually break, I know all of you don't, uh, most of you don't have screens that you're looking at. But uh, I do have it on screens that if you go, one, once I put them up on the website, it's possible to be able to see the PowerPoint slides that I have. So I'm going to read the first slide and then we're going to talk about it and we'll go through the, the points that way. And again, this is the glyph for Sagittarius. And let me read. The glyph of Sagittarius is the arrow of aspiration as well as the arrow of praise and prayer. Prayer is the means to propel one's request to reach high dimensions. Like the arrow, the aimer, the prayer that enters the dimension of heaven must be straight and in plain language. Prayers that enter the higher realms are those that are predicated on true principles, which are in alignment with God's will and released by compassion and right perception. Prayers that Prayers can be especially effective when prayed by those who vibrate at a spiritual level and have immediate and profound access to heavenly principles. Jesus was such an anointed, righteous soul whose thoughts and words were like arrows that were able to hit long-range targets. Jesus' decrees and prayers were able to heal and work wonders at great distances. An arrow in flight suggests the ability to aim at a target, though it's, seem, though it's seemingly out of reach. It represents the power of hope, targeting goals that are in the distance or immediate future to come forth and manifest desirable results. Hope is the mindset that envisions the best outcomes being indifferent to the current state of physical evidence. So that's the first section of this part of the book that talks about the glyph. And when you try to imagine that glyph, imagine that arrow. For a moment, start thinking about this arrow is trying to teach me how my aspirations, how my praise and prayers can open up the pathways to me in heaven and to, to um, to strike or ignite, because remember we said that this is actually a fire sign. It can be like a, a, a lightning strike or a might match starting, that it can ignite blessings for me that I think may be far away from me. Things that I think they're not, you know, they're not near. Because, you know, an archer with an arrow, he can stand way back and he can pull that, that uh, string on that bow. He can hit a target that seems that's a long distance away from him. And we have to sometimes, with our prayers, do the same thing. How do we target things that are not, uh, that we know we want, we know we can, uh, we kind of envision them, but it's saying, you know something, I need to be able to send that fire engine, I need to send that spirit to it so I can help to uh, attain that which I want. So it says that, first of all, that the arrow is the arrow of aspiration, and these arrows represent the ability to use praise and prayer to attain the things that we um, know are a part of our spiritual develop, development. So it says prayers is a, is, is a mean to propel your request to reach higher dimensions. And the arrow, as we look at it, is something that you, you know, it's, you always aim high. You don't, you know, point arrows at the ground. You don't think those are very effective. That means that you really don't want to use your powers to try to just get things that are right near you near the ground 
But how do you talk about the higher dimensions? How do you get things to that higher spiritual dimensions? Um, when I mentioned earlier that you know, Sagittarius is a fire sign, it's that fire signs kind of represents that spirit, that spirit. How do you get the spirit uh, part involved in things? So like the arrow or the archer, the aimer, and that's you, you're the one who are aiming things. What are you aiming your prayers at? And are you praying, aiming them at the heavenly dimensions? And when you do that, are you being straight and talking in plain language? Uh, so that means you, you know, a lot of times we do things and we, you know, we have a lot of our prayers are filled with uh, half skepticism and we're not talking plainly to God. We think that if we, you know, embellish them uh, with, uh, you know, fancy words and things like that, that our prayers will be answered and not that those type of prayers um, won't be answered. But when you're talking about heavenly things, there are times in your life when you need something that is straight to the point and in plain language that you can understand. Uh, you need that relief that comes, I said, in very clear, precise, uh, pointed language. Because remember, that's what the arrow re represents. You don't shoot a dull arrow at something and think that you're going to, to get something from it. You want that arrow to be sharp. You want it to be plain. You want it to go straight to the point. And that's one of the things that that arrow of Sagittarius is teaching us. That there, when we're really trying to open up the dimensions of heaven, we want to be straight about what we're doing. Get, and it means we're getting right to the point. We want it to be plain so it does have a point. But you're not talking around what you, you need. You're saying, this is exactly what I'm, 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 I'm looking for. So in our prayers, we have to learn how to be straight and plain. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to be a great orator. You don't have to say, oh, I want to go and learn how to speak in a, a certain tone. No. When we're trying to get prayers to heaven, straight and plain are just fine. So prayers that enter the high, and, and then the lesson says, prayers that enter the higher realms are those that are predicated on truth principles. Now that's where we're talking about making it straight. So if you're going to make it straight, that means that you should be using principles that are already based on the truth. Principles that are already firm. And that makes it straight. Not that you're trying to, um, like I said, embellish them with your own um, passions and things like that. But you're saying, no, this is the principle of truth that I'm trying to accomplish. So I want it to be, again, straight and plain. Because it said they need to be in alignment with God's will and release. But let's just somewhere about it. So because when you're using things that are based on truth principles, that means that you are aligning your desires with God's will, that you see something, that you see how God is involved in what you are actually trying to achieve. Uh, and that's why we use things like uh, uh, different passages of the Bible or different uh, things that we learn, because these are like promises and principles that God has given to us. So when we align our prayers with those promises, we can be more assured that they are in line with God's will. Now, that doesn't mean that people can't embellish and try to jerry-pick things out of God, things to kind of put together something on. But the more you'll learn to be to open up your spiritual uh, sight and be able to see what is God actually trying to give me, more, the more we'll be in aligned with God's will as we're trying to make our prayers and our actions straight. And it says it has to be released by compassion and right perception because you know when the arrow um no like especially you know because you usually think of an arrow or is is something that you have in a bow but the first part of shooting an arrow is actually pulling the bow back um and you know when you see the archer you see them they take that or put that arrow into that string and pull it back well that bow is representing how much compassion and right perception because you pull it back and then you kind of uh, that right perception is you look and take aim uh, of what you're shooting into so that part of that bowman's action of pulling it back is um, I, I even think of sometimes it's like you 
um, and I'm going to compare this to a breath as we go into it. And when I say compare it to the breath, there are different types of breath you can take. And part of the breath that we're saying that we're going to take when we're thinking about this arrow of aspiration is take time to breathe in. Because if you, if you see a person that's on a bow, you'll see that they first, they do what? They breathe in. And as they breathe in, it's like you uh, just hold it for a moment when you're taking aim, and then you release it. So it's sort of like that you breathe in, make sure you're aimed properly, and then you release. So it's saying that there's a way, even spiritually, in your prayers, you can make those type of prayers that you have uh, gone through that process, that you have used that align yourself with the will of God. You have breathed in that thing that you want to and make sure it is as, as correct Make sure that you have some uh, a compassion with it. Uh, because remember, we don't want to shoot arrows uh, just to say that they're going to destroy things, but we're actually targeting the right principles that we're trying to release. So when we have that right perception, uh, or we see that we are targeted on something that is going to be a spiritual benefit of mankind, then we can release that arrow with a quickness. Uh, this is, a, and you know, like I said, there's many different ways of using spiritual energy. And here we're trying to use that spiritual energy uh, when in a way that we can breathe in the concept we want, make sure that it's aligned properly with what we have, and then have that release of it, and it will fly out just like a, the arrow flies out of the boat. Now it says, prayers can be especially effective when prayed by those who vibrate at a spiritual level and have immediate and profound access to heavenly principles. That means once you, you know, to actually get a prayer, sometimes you need to have, you know, uh, uh, an archer needs some arrows. And by the things you learn spiritually, they become like arrows in your uh, quiver that you have them there. Uh, you have these spiritual principles, but they need to be like principles you have. They're waiting, they're waiting and ready to achieve things to you. So you will have people who do from the spiritual level they have, and that's the spiritual level. It's when they get to use those, those uh, learn those spiritual muscles more and get it so they are more powerful with it. Yes, they can help to make the arrows more effective, make those principles in there. But you got to make sure like you have uh, some arrows in your quiver to be able to do it. So even with spiritual principles, what principles do you have? That's why throughout the year, we're going over some of the things and some of the, the, the blessings that God has to it. Uh, especially like when we have the high holy days and we talk about all the spiritual principles that you may use. That's like filling your, uh, your consciousness with the type of things, the type of principles that will reach in heaven. So it would help you to vibrate. And here, when we think about vibrating at a spiritual level, it means you want to have a, a, a bow that, you know, you don't want to have like a loose bow. You want a bow that is, um, uh, that kind of like it's, it's, has some, what do you want to call it, twang or something, you know, that it has some power behind the bow that you're using. And as you grow spiritually and you grow in faith, that will give more and more power behind your bow. So we want to think of making ourselves more spiritually um, uh, at higher spiritual levels and by working with people who have that. Because the next lesson says, Jesus was such an anointed righteous soul whose thoughts and words were like arrows that were able to hit long range targets. So it's saying that sometimes we want to uh, align ourselves with those who are anointed those righteous souls and whose thoughts become like these arrows that they can send out uh, and just say it and make it happen, even if it may be long distance from us. There are many parable, not many stories in the Bible of Jesus uh, helping people who were far away from him, the centurion who came to him and said, you know, my servant uh, needs to be healed, but you can just say the word and it's done. Uh, why? Because he could send that arrow, that power of his spiritual essence to go 
and do what he commanded it to do. So sometimes, yes, we need to call and, and align ourselves with those who have more power in their uh, skill to send out these things to do it. And from some of the things we learn about Jesus, we can do that. It says, Jesus' decrees and prayers were able to heal and work wonders at great distances. And we want to learn how to do that too. That even though the person is the far from us, we we'll don't think, oh, I got to get on a, a, a plane or I got to take a train or take my car over to them. Can you say and feel that, remember we talked earlier about that compassion and that right perception. Can you have that compassion and right perception for that person, even though they may be far away, that even when you pray for him, that your decrees and your prayers were able to heal and work wonders regardless of the distance? Um, regardless. So all of these are, are these or all these things are things that that arrow can teach us uh, or inspires us to do. Say an arrow in flight suggests the ability to aim at a target though it is seemingly out of reach. It represents the power of hope. And I want to stop there. It represents the power of hope. So earlier we called it aspiration, but aspiration is just a part of uh, uh, that concept that we call hope. And hope is what are you expecting? So it's telling us that it's flight uh, or ability to aim at a target that is out of reach is saying, what are your expectations? And uh, you'd be surprised at how many people are inspired by the way you expect Expect them to live in your life. And I'm going to go over that slowly. Many people, the greatest way to help them, and especially through the power of hope, is what are you expecting of that person? Because your expectations of the person can affect them and have an impact on them and get them to even align their lives better. Now, yes, sometimes people. Uh, when you're talking to them and you're trying to expect the best, you know, you're trying to get them to do the best and they don't want to listen to you, your hope inside of you still has to be, I believe that this can produce for this person. I believe, uh, or I have this expectation, uh, and it has to be, and to me saying belief is, is sometimes too weak. I expect this person to come through this. I expect this person to find the power and the strength that they need to make it through it. That prompts something is usually one of the most effective ways of praying for someone is having that expectation, not downing a person said, oh, they got, and especially when you, a lot of times when we were praying for people, what we want to do is, oh, if they would just do it my way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's bad. Don't, don't think that the person has to do it your way expect and hope that the person can find God's way of getting the thing done, that they can find God uh, through that process. Because many times when people tell you their problem, they're not going into the full detail of the problem. They're not telling you all the things that they are considering in the problem. Uh, they're usually they're giving you things that sometimes they're giving you the things that they want the most help with, but they don't give it all to you. God knows it all. So you want to expect that God's spirit, God energy will be at work in that person's. So that's why I'm saying it represents the power of hope and targeting goals that in a distance or immediate future. So you want to be able to target that thing that is going to you get that person to get that inspiration. Remember saying it's like a, uh, you want to get that uh, spark of, uh, of fire uh, going in that person. And by your expectations, you encourage people to do what? Ignite that spirit, that light that, that is within them, even though they may be at a distance, through that light. Not through your, you know, you're not trying to, uh, well, you're not trying to, direct the person, especially if you're trying to direct the person that's going to be what's your will, what's going to make you feel better about it, what's going to make you um, feel that, you know, you something has been res resolved for you. No, we're saying, how can we resolve this in a way that is for God? 
and that they would get in the immediate future, very soon, even though they're at a distance, that they can get that spark of light, that spark of hope in them so that they will continue on the path to God. So you wanted to come forth and manifest desirable results. He said hope is the mindset that envisions the best outcomes being indifferent to the current state of physical evidence. So it means you're not trying to look at what the person is now or how they feel now. You're saying that you want to envision that best outcome for them. And that best outcome is when they get in to the will of God. Does anyone have any uh, comments right now? Or questions? How about this arrow of aspiration that we learn from the sign of uh, the glyph for the sign of Sagittarius. Shalom, Father Tom. Shalom. I want to thank you for bringing a massive lesson on the uh, the glyph of uh, Sagittarius. Oh, thank you. This is our Supreme you. Father Marshall. How are you doing? I'm good. Shalom to everyone. It's, imp it's important that you know we realize, as uh, Father Tom is teaching us, that we are composite beings. We are beings of energy. And our prayers are divine energy or God energy being sent out. And if we have that thought, that consciousness, as we send out God energy, God does not fail. It's important, as the lesson is indicated through his teachings, that our prayers be aligned with truth. Truth does not fail. Often, we take the negative side of I see, and we want to see physical evidence immediately, not knowing that the energy that we're working with is beyond the physical realm and is invisible creation energy that is being utilized to bring the transformation that is desired and required. We have to realize that God works in order. The first law in heaven is order. And so we need to allow God and the hierarchy of heaven to put things in divine order. God is not a God of chaos that's radical and just going to jump in and cause confusion. So allow God and the hierarchy of heaven to do the work that is important and significant and to put your affairs in divine order. The glyph is a beautiful symbol. It can be meditated upon. And you'll be surprised of the power that it has and just watching it and looking at it. And referring back to the principles that Father Tyrone is teaching us today, that we should aim high. And we should know if our prayers align with truth, then it pierces into heaven. If our prayers are not truth, then what are they? Are they just our desires, our hate, our envy, our deceit? When we pray for people to be destroyed or condemn people, debase people, those are not prayers. Mm. When we are doubtful and confused and don't know what to do, those are not prayers. We have to have a clear vision. That vision should be aimed at a target. And that target will be hit if we aim with the concept of truth and who we truly are. I do have to uh, prepare myself for the lesson I have to bring today, but I just want to say this in, 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 in closing for myself. You are not the body. The body is a terrestrial, temporal, physical vessel. But you are not the body, though the body is a temple for your soul and a vessel of light. You're not the fluctuating feelings and oscillating emotions. But if your emotions are inspired, your emotions and feelings are the means and wings to lift you to lofty heights. You're not the egotistical, pride-driven, 
transitory mind. But when the mind is enlightened, it is the feet of the soul. You are an emanation of eternal God. You are a being of light. So in all things, allow your celestial self, your divine self, your holy self, to manifest all the things that you need. Know that there's energy and the essence and the power of God all around you that's available to you that you can gestate through your imagination and cause those things to formulate in your life. This is part of the lesson that we learned from Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Using your imagination, staying hopeful in spite of circumstances. Don't let people tell you that you can't be healed. Don't let people tell you that you can't be prosperous. And don't tell yourself these negative things. Let your higher mind speak through you and from your soul to you. And be obedient to the commands of the God within you, your soul within you. And you will reach your higher aspirations. God bless all of you, Father Connor, and thank you for bringing forth this lesson from the book and making people aware that this will be uh, additional copies coming forth. It is a blessing. We have to acknowledge ourselves as universal beings, not just one sign. We have all 12 powers within us. Right now, in a sense, we're all Sagittarius because we're under the influence of Sagittarius. But we're not any sign. We are souls. God bless you. And I thank you for a very beautiful lesson, Father Tower. No, thank, thank, thank you for joining us. I know you have to get out to, to your service, so thank you very much for being with us and bringing us more light uh, uh, on this topic. So we really appreciate you being with us and we appreciate your words. Because, you know, just to kind of pee back on what he's saying, because it's something that I, I hadn't thought about, but he was talking about order, that when God, the first law that Mother taught us of the universe is order. And when we're talking about getting yourself, uh, you know, with divine, I mean, uh, truth principles, when we're talking about the will of God, it's talking about getting your life in order. And if we can do that, get our life in our order, get our expectations in order. When it talks, when it talk about that uh, straight and plain language that you can use, all of that is to get it in that right order that it takes away all of uh, the other thoughts. So, uh, Supreme Father, thank you for, for helping to open our, our hearts and mind. And, in, and when he was talking, when, when he was, uh, Supreme Father was talking about the composite being, remember, I am just looking at one section of it. You can even learn more about uh, that composite being uh, in the other lessons we have on uh, Sagittarius. Like I said, I'm just taking one small part of the Sagittarius lesson. He talks about the, the Sagittarius as a whole. He talks about uh, the, the, um, the key phrase and all of that in this book on spiritual astrology. And he talks about, of course, that composite being, how you do this composite being, but of being that composite being, you're not the mind, you're not the body, you are the soul. That is so important for us to learn. So again, uh, Supreme Father, thank you for coming with us and enlighten us on these lessons and with enlightening us with the opportunity to have a, a book that has all these principles in it. And as I also mentioned, has such beautiful meditations and prayers in it. Because as I said, I'm just reading from some of the uh, narrative and descriptive parts, but there are beautiful meditations that are a part of it that you can use. Uh, and as you said, he's teaching you about the, the way to look at these symbols so that even these symbols can be a part of your meditation, but applying godly, orderly principles to them as you think on the sign of Sagittarius. Uh, and he said that while we're under that influence, all of us can have that influence of Sagittarius on us, uh, especially when you think of this time of year where people need uh, to point the arrows higher, to look over some of the things that are uh, around us. The way that people act during this time can be very, very depressing because a lot of people, uh, they get depressed because we're in that period when the sunlight is getting smaller and smaller. So 
it's a time that you need to keep your expectations high. You need to keep thinking on that light uh, and seeing the lights around them to get people through this time. So thank you very much for being with us, uh, Supreme Father, uh, for giving us this word. And we'll understand that, you know, when you need to, to go off to your, to your other service that uh, we'll understand uh, and well, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful that you came and been, been with us for as much time as you can give us today. So thank you very much. Does anyone else have any thoughts before we go on with this beautiful lesson? At least it's beautiful for me. You know, it's good to have uh, people like our Supreme Father and Mother Loretta and Deacon and Teresa sometimes to add um, to the thoughts in us because the this. I, we believe in using the Spirit, and the Spirit sometimes they don't just come from the person teaching. They come from everyone contributing and, and giving their aspect and their perspective of the truth. So, anyone else have any thoughts before we go to the next section? Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope all is well. I just wanted to thank our Father Tyrone for this lesson, and especially thanks to Father Marshall for not only the teaching but the guidance the understanding, the vision. You know, sometimes I'm finding out even through the teaching, it's powerful mm -hmm. because it touches your spirit and enlightens your spirit. It's like a guidance. It's, it's like your understanding is getting more clear, you know, and, and I'm just so thankful this morning and good morning, everybody. This is Deacon Jackson and, you know, I, I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful for this, this line that no matter what goes on, that we still can call this line and get an understanding and feel the love, the teaching, the guidance, the leadership. That is so important as we go through our everyday life. And, and I'm, I'm just so thankful. You know, I'm thankful for a lot of things, you know, and uh, I choose not to let the negative overtake me. Amen. And I will continue to pray, continue to, to not lean to my own understanding. Because God will direct my path. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you to both of you all and everybody that's on this line. It's, it's such an amazing, uh, amazing thing to feel the love and the guidance and the leadership. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You're quite welcome. And thank you for, 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 for sharing. Because, uh, like I said, that's why Mother wanted us here, to so be able to help people to stay on that hope. Uh, stay on that expectation that you are a spiritual being, you're going through mental and physical, uh, uh, emotional experiences, but it's your soul. That's the important part. And to keep your soul directed, pointed to God, like that arrow of aspiration, that we can all use that during this time to make our lives better. Does anyone else have any thoughts or comments? I'm going to go to the, uh, said I did break this down into three screens. I'm going to read the next screen uh, that's from this glyph. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about that one. Now, in this particular part of it, it says, like the Sagittarius arrow, the intentions of our thoughts and visions should aim towards the highest fulfillment. This luminary, a representation of the mind of Christ, has the ability to deliver energized thoughts with amazing transformative power. Man, knowingly or unknowingly, has the capacity to project thought and words from the throne of his higher soul being. As stated in Isaiah, so shall, be, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. And that's from Isaiah 55, 11. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And this is most appropriate to have a vision in life that, is, that can be fulfilled. However, the vision stated here in Proverbs 29, 18 speaks about the visions from God, not those designed by the mind of mundane thinkers. Indeed, we would suffer 
at the fulfillment of such thoughts. Numerous visions are fulfilled that are contrary to the divine plan of God, though they, uh, uh, though they being happy, though they being bring happiness temporarily, I think should be, mundane human visions are not so endowed to assure harmony without negative outcomes. So that's the next section we're having here, and it's talking about how to get the highest fulfillment of your thoughts. How do you have that mind of Christ? We all have the mind of Christ within us. It's, it's represent that mind of Christ in you. So it's representing your higher thoughts. And that mind in you, realize that there's a mind in you, a Christ in you, a light within you that has the ability to deliver energized thoughts. And these are the thoughts that have transformative power. Uh, it is like that mind of Christ that is in all of us. It has the power to transform the things around us. But how do we connect up to it? Said so mankind, knowingly or unknowingly, has the capacity to project thoughts and words from the throne of his higher soul being. And that's what is more important from our scripture teaching. How do you make sure that the thoughts and words that you are projecting are from your higher soul being? Because with your higher soul being, uh, as Father Marshall was saying, is a composite being. Your higher soul being is a composite. It is a uh, joining together of uh, the other parts of you that you sometimes say are your emotions, you sometimes say your creative ability, you sometimes think of it as your mind, and you think of your spirit. When your soul, all those things are combined into a composite being. It's from the soul that they, they come together, they join together, and they have the um, ability or the insight to be able to see even farther than you can see in what's going to happen. So when it, you are led by that higher insight, that higher soul being within you, you are aligned with God in the things that you do. You're not just doing it for yourself. You're not just doing it for your race. You're doing it for all of the universe to become a better place. And so he's telling us that this passage from uh, Isaiah that talking about the words going to your mouth and they should not return unto you your void, they don't return unto you void and they will uh, prosper in the things or you send them in a permanent way because you are using, uh, like Isaiah, he was using the Christ mind when he was saying this. He, so he's saying, so shall my words be that go forth out of mouth. He's saying that he, because he is using words that are from this higher spiritual soul, he knows that they are not going to return unto him void. Now, does that mean that every vision you have, everything you have, uh, every you know idea you have, that they're coming from that higher soul and that they won't return into you and then be voided out? For him to say it won't be void, remember Jesus told us that why spend your treasures, why spend your inner man on things that were going to rot and turn away? Why can't you learn how to, like Isaiah, find out that I want to have those things in my, that my life that won't return unto me void? I want those things in my life that will uh, prosper uh, where I send them. Uh, but it takes that higher state of mind to start to learn how to, how can I get all of these unnecessary things out of my mind, out of my life, and start living for my soul being. And you'll find the closer you get to living by your soul being, the more happiness you'll find, the more fulfillment you'll find, the more joy you'll find. Even when you're going through circumstances for others, it look like, oh, he's going through all these things, and yet you'll be going through with a smile on your face. Uh, and sometimes you, they, will, they will think, oh, if he's in, the, you know, he's in this position, how can he still be smiling? They don't know that within you, you can still see God at work within you. And, and it says, you said, where there is no vision, the people perish. It will always, God can always give you a vision inside, no matter what circumstance, even though you're walking through the valley of shadow of death, you can still some know that God is with you. Uh, and a lot of times we get so misdirected on some of the things that are happening around us that we don't see that God is with us. 
And this saying, that's the type of vision it's saying, having that vision that you can't see the blessings of God, that you can't see the light of God in your life. So we want to make sure that we um, keep that vision in our mind and keep that vision in our hearts and that we use our inner abilities as a composite and they come and they become a composite in the soul. They do not become, you can't figure out everything in your life by your emotions. You can't figure out everything in your life by your creative talents. You can't create everything in your life by your mind and you can't create everything in your life just by some of the uh, spiritual period, uh, uh, principles you have or perceptions you have. You have to have that soul that is able to combine all of them into one um, uh, composite being. And it's through that soul that you'll find that you'll be able to fulfill things that are lasting. Any comments or questions so far? Especially comments. Anyone else have any comments for us? I know our Supreme Father had to go off to his, his meetings, but we were glad to, that he was with us for a while. But do we have any other ones? Anyone else have any thoughts or questions? Just remember right, that energized thoughts that we can have. We can energize, in other words, we can energize the thoughts to have transformative power. But you energize them with the light of the Christ, that light of God within us. And now this is this last section. Maybe we'll get out early because uh, I think it was a good lesson, but maybe sometimes the short ones are the better ones. And remember, we're still talking about that arrow of inspiration. And this is the final portion of talking about that glyph of Sagittarius. This can be corrective individually or collectively as recorded in Isaiah chapter seven, number eight. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let, his, let him return to, unto the Lord. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are, my, neither are your ways my ways. However, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the image or form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. This is an aspiration that we are to aim towards. So this aspiration that he talks about here, he talks about uh, three different pastors, or three, three different uh, sections from Bible. First, he said, because uh, he's talking about how this type of spirit in you, this type of effective prayer in you that can open up heaven can be powerful for you individually or it can be powerful for you collectively. So it can help you as an individual. It can help all those around you. It says, uh, and a lot of it comes from you forsaking um, those things or those thoughts because it's from Isaiah he says let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord uh, so it's saying that once you start forsaking some of your own um, ways of perceptions of things and you start letting it go saying you know some of the things that I've perceived about myself and some of the things I've perceived about other people I want to not concentrate on them, and I want to concentrate on what does God, what does the Lord want for us? And in here, the Lord is spelled in all capitals, so we're talking about that Lord is spelled as what we call the Tetragrammaton, uh, the four-letter name of God, which is uh, Yahweh, yud heh vav -Heh. So it's saying that personal God, that high God that we have, that yud heh vav -Heh God that we can have in our life, that we need to return into those fundamental principles that for that for use of represents a foundation. So we need to return to that foundation of God and not just look at the, because when you're saying that the wicked forsake his way, some people are so into just doing the things that they would make their personal or individual life better. Uh, and the unrighteous man has thought. Some people, there are some things that they want 
that they are willing to do anything and everything to make it happen the way they think. They said as an unrighteous person to be a person that is not trying to correct things. They're uh, uh, for all. They're trying to make sure that I get, and I don't care who else loses or who else doesn't have things. I want to just make it so the way I'm thinking of things and usually selfish things. That's why I want to do it, and let him return into the Lord. Turn, return into the principles of the way God wanted things to be. Like in America, you know, people, you know, we're, you know, so many people try to make it, oh, I'm an American and those people aren't Americans, even though people who have been born here, people who have worked for it, people who have stro uh, who have striven to make the place a better place, but you're saying, oh, but they're not Americans. I'm the American one. Um, when America should be a concept that we want to spread all over the world. Why do we want the concepts? It's how, you know, America was built on some beautiful concepts, and how could we not want them to be spread over to everyone? I know our president had uh, called together to have this uh, assembly to, to about democracy. We should, and how, and actually what he was saying is all these democratic governments need to start working together, which is the, the beautiful part about America, that out of many, you come together and start working together as one. And you have this democracy, which means how do you let the people um, get involved in working towards the whole? Yes, it's a bunch of individual peoples, but everybody starts working for the benefit for, uh, of everyone, that everyone starts working, pulling together to make life better for us all. So how can we forsake this wickedness? How can we forsake this unrighteous thoughts of just having it for ourselves? or justifying doing evil, corrupt things because we think that somehow it's going to make us look better in our sight, in the sights of those that we think are near us, and start thinking about how do we try to fulfill the true purposes of God. And in that, we have to find that when you're looking at the true purposes of God, it says that God's thoughts are not like our thoughts, neither are His ways like our ways and that's when we're saying when we're saying that you're forsaking it you're forsaking that spirit that just sees you yes you are a composite being but once you become that composite being once you become a part of that soul you become a part of the christ consciousness of the universal consciousness the cosmic consciousness you become a part of the thinking for all and that's why when jesus talks sometimes he talks about how you know, what you've done to the least of them, you've done to me. What kind of thinking brought that on, that he could feel that he was a part of everyone, uh, and that when you do something to anyone, that you were actually doing something to him? How can we all try to get to that consciousness? And, and the other passage he talks about is, uh, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form or the image of God, so he's saying that Jesus took on that image of God and tried to, um, and, and not tried, but he lived by how God saw him, not by how Jesus himself saw himself, but how God saw him. He had been, became that form, uh, an a, a image of God for us, so all can see how God wanted to be, because so Jesus' thought was it was not robbery to be equal with God. And to be equal means to that you become God's representative. You become God's emissary. You become God's messenger. That type of equal. You know, because so often when we think about being uh, equal uh, with God, you know, we have people saying, oh, I'm a God. And the first thing they want to do is they want to try to crush others. Uh, and I've always thought that was a crazy thought, that you want to be like God, but you want to be a tyrant. God is not a tyrant. So how are you going to say to yourself, oh, I'm going to become a god, but I'm going to be a tyrant? What kind of, what god are you talking about? You're not talking about uh, uh, the god that was called the Lord. That, that god is not a tyrant. What you're trying to say is you want to be like those gods we saw in Greek mythology. You want to be like the gods you saw somewhere else. You don't want to be like the real true god. You want to be mean. You want to be hateful. 
you want to be um, uh, uh, dominating over everyone. And God was a God of loving kindness. God was a love, God of compassion. God is a God that uh, freely gives abundantly. So if you're saying, because when, it, when it's talking about Jesus Christ being in the image of God and thought it not Robert to equal the God, what was the God that he was talking about? Was he talking about a God that was just trying to oppress people? Or was he talking about a God that was the height of uh, uh, the highest level of love for all, the highest level of compassion for all, the highest level of sacrifice and loving kindness to all. That is when you're the image of God, not when you can go around and just boss people around. Uh, that's not the image of God. Or uh, when you can uh, say that, oh, I got, I, you know, I got more than anyone else, and but I'm not going to give anything away. God has an abundantly, and He gives abundantly. Uh, I'll give a pause again. Does anyone else have any thoughts? Taking a moment to get some water there. It's Shalom. Shalom. As as we were talking, I was thinking about the arrow, and I was thinking about our thoughts. You know, our thoughts could be a symbol of that arrow. It could be our high thoughts, our lower thoughts. But which way are we pointing our thoughts when we send them out? They're, they're going out like an arrow, and they can disperse. How are they they're dispersing? Are they good thoughts or lower thoughts? So another way to see it, too, is that arrow is going out, which I see as being thoughts also. And when that arrow goes out, the number is going to go out. But when that arrow comes back, that arrow can also turn around and point back to yourself. So in that, we have to be careful in our thinking and what we're saying with that arrow and make sure with that arrow that we want to have positive, loving thoughts that go out because things that we send out will come back. So whatever you're sending out, make sure it's good what you're sending out because when it comes back to you, it's going to be what you sent out. Thank you so much, Melody, and it's so true that we, we think that the arrow is just going to go out, but when we know that we're, uh, that life is a circle, what you send out comes back to you. And so when you're sending out these powerful arrows to help change things, uh, if you're changing things for the worse, then don't be surprised when the worst comes back at you. Uh, don't become, you know, if you're sending out, uh, you know, hatred and, deception for others so that you think that you're going to prosper that same destruction is going to come to you and yes sometimes you can send out things and it'll make you look like you get more money but then you get mixed up eternally that you your emotions might get off uh you know you might try to you know you'll do things and you'll get gain all this money but then emotionally where are you mentally where are you uh, you know you hear all these stories about these people who have money and become rich and yet they become, um, uh, you know, they, they're like empty. They're always searching. They're always afraid. Uh, I want to be able to, to to be at peace and find peace in all I do. And, I'm, and when I'm talking about peace, I don't mean I want to try to find some um, uh, solace in just drinking or uh, smoking something that's going to make me feel better. I want to be able to find, because remember, when anything you smoke or drink, your body has to, and you think is a good feeling, didn't your body already possess the ability to feel that way before you smoke or drink? Why do you end up becoming dependent on the smoking or the drinking or whatever it is when those principles are already in you? Um, why can't you activate them? from these composite parts of yourself? Why can you, can't you uh, activate them through your emotions, through your creativity, through your uh, mind, and through your spirit? Why do you have to kind of do something, and, and especially when you're talking about you know, people using drink, it was, it's always amazed me that people will take drinking as something as, uh, as inspiring them and making them feel good 
when alcohol is a depressant and it's a it's uh gives you like this buzz but that buzz ends up in a depression uh so why do you think that is going to make you a better person if you are just going to depress and to me a lot of times what is depressing is trying to depress your your vision of some of the evil nasty wrong things that you've done um, and you feel better because you feel uh, you don't feel like mother Loretta saying that you don't feel that that evil you send back is coming to you you just don't you're just not aware of it then it's like you know we take pain pills and thinking that that problem is solved well the pain pill is just masking the fact that you still have a problem um, and if you're going to take the pain pill, what are you going to do against the problem? I'm not, going to, I'm not telling you not to take the pain pill so you don't feel it, but are you taking the pain pill and then forgetting that you have a problem that you need solved? Because if you're taking the pain pill and you're forgetting that you still have a problem, you're just letting the problem grow. So you don't, don't stop the pain and then not take time to address the problem pain pills and things of that nature were there to help you get more time to solve the problem. So just don't think that, oh, I'll stop the pain and I'll be fine. No, you've got to actually see well, what is the root cause and how do I get to actually making the root cause of what's of my problem better for me. Anyone else have any thoughts they'd like to share with us? But as I said, this is just one section uh, in one, and when I say section, the section is on Sagittarius. And this is one small part of just on that Sagittarius. Uh, and the book is made so um, you can use it to um, study the sign, uh, have prayers that are... Um, <coughs> For that type of time or that type of um, um, that particular aspect that you're looking in, because that's what we really, we study astrology, so you can learn the dis uh, different aspects and know when you need to turn to that aspect of it. Uh, but it's a beautiful book. Uh, probably when we do our class lessons in the future, it'll be the type of book that we'll use to help to train people in astrology, because it has so many of the points in that that book. So, like I said, it's a, a beautiful book. They're working on getting additional copies of it out for soon. Uh, still a few things they have to correct. But I wanted to just to share this small portion that talks about that um, the glyph for Sagittarius and how just a small thing like that glyph can be something that you can meditate on, get beautiful lessons in your life on, get the inspiration you need some time to um, that you need in your life and from this one to get that inspiration that sometimes you need that uh, that quick fire starting uh, inspiration that solve the problem that you think that is not you know that is far away that far away thing you think it looks far away from you now but you have to remember but do I have, do I have an arrow that I can use that I can put a spark in that thing right now and get it going so it's helping me to get closer to my realization of the God that is within me. So anyone else have any thoughts that they'd like to share with us? Now I'd like us to remember the phrase that we have from our Supreme Mother and I find that this is a good thing to, like it says, that each day, this t talks about repeating this daily. Today, I will walk in the light, talk in the light, think in the light. I am the light within. So, thank you for being with us. I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. I'll pause one more time to see if anyone uh, wanted, to get a wanted to say something that I didn't give you a chance to say.
not think and meditate on the arrow of, uh, of, ins of aspiration. Know that that arrow, that spark of fire, that spark of light is something that we all need, especially during this time of the year when things can get very depressing. You know, uh, you know, I know when I go out driving on the road and you see people are, are uh, jumping in front of you in the car and when I say jumping in front of you they'll be in their car and they'll just you know jump in front of you and go you know back and forth getting in traffic um, and you have to pray for them that they will you know find the answer that they're looking for that they'll find the peace they'll look for that they'll be able to get wherever wherever it is they're in such a hurry to get to that they will get there but they'll get there and find peace expect for them to find the peace and joy in that life uh, with their ask, you know, with what they're doing. And I know a lot of us is already starting to put up your decorations. I think you need your decorations. You need that light. You need those uh, sparkling things around you to remind you that there's a God, there is a Christ within. So uh, it's good to pull out those, uh, those decorations and those things that are going to make you uh, better and to make sure that you uh, don't get so depressed about some of your, your memories and the stories from your life look at them and see how you could be a blessing to yourself and others from the experiences that you have gone through and uh, continue to to master so again thank you for being with us um, our website is www.spiritualguidancetemple.org uh, some of our old messages are there but i am behind on catching them up but we'll get there and thank those who have been giving us donations. We really appreciate the donations you've been giving to us to help things going. Right now we're in a phase where we're doing some painting at the temple. We're painting some of the, we've done some of the inside. We're doing some outside work now um, that is going uh, uh, pretty well. So we're glad for some of the things that are happening uh, to the outside, getting that looking good and uh, back, to, to, uh, back up to a, a higher spiritual level. And again, if you want to make donations to us, you can go to our website and use the donate button. It's a PayPal button, but you can do it through uh, through an uh, a e-check or a credit card or through a PayPal account. And uh, if, if you have Cash App, you can send us uh, donations through my telephone number at 954-549-4713. And I can be able to send that to the Temple's account. And, and I give that number, you can do that number to send either Cash App or Zelle but to, uh, and, and I can send it to the temple. If you want to use Zelle and send it directly to the temple, you can send your, uh, set up your Zelle account to make a contribution to offerings at spiritualguidancetemple.org and that's O-F-F-E-R-I-N-G-S at spiritualguidancetemple.org and as I said, thank you to those who have been making donations and keeping, uh, are keeping us afloat for some of the things that we've been working towards. But for our dismissal, and uh, after the dismissal, we'll turn off the, the recording because I know sometimes people like to share things with us after the recording. But may I say, may the love of God illuminate your way. May the will of God direct you each day. May the truth of God all errors depart. May the peace of God forever dwell in your heart. Amen, amen, amen.